Thank you very much for having me. Um, it's great to be here. I appreciate uh, the invite and the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, my project and um, and hopefully engage with the community more widely. So uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, introduction to FastGraph, which is a project that I've been working on to build great, simple APIs for your Neo4j projects using Fast API integrated with Neo4j databases. So just um, saying, I appreciate the um, introduction. I'll give you a little bit uh, about myself. As, as you mentioned, my name is David Bender. Um, I'm originally from, from Canada, but now live in London, England, working in real estate investing, leading digitization and data analytics. And I've been really drawn to graph databases as an incredible opportunity to change the way that we think about data in the industry and to try to drive different types of decision making and hopefully um, really, really move the industry forward. I think Neo4j is an incredible uh, opportunity and tool for us to be able to do that. So it's been, it's been really exciting to work on this project. It's been really exciting to learn more about Neo4j. And also I will um, touch on more about Fast API and this project. So a little bit of background about the project. Um, it started out as a personal project, something uh, to get through the pandemic, as I'm sure we've all had to, to deal with um, in late 2020. It was a way for me to learn more about Fast API and to extend the package into Neo4j. It's something that um, I hadn't really seen existing. So um, great way to wrap your Neo4j databases with an incredibly powerful tool. Um, it's entirely written in Python, although a lot of the backend functions will uh, do execute Cypher. So if you're familiar with Cypher, which I'm sure many of you are, then you'll, you'll be really comfortable when you take a look at the repository if you do. It is still very much in development. So, um, you know, this is a personal project of mine that I'm sort of hoping that others will be interested in and interested to collaborate on. Um, encourage you to fork your own versions and play around with it. Um, I think there's lots of space that uh, we could continue to explore in Fast API and the ways that we could be building really incredible integrations with Neo4j and other types of tools. So, I've mentioned it a few times, but what is Fast API and why should you care? Well, if you're a Python programmer, this will be really, really interesting to you. Um, even if you're not, I think it's a phenomenal tool for building uh, REST API backends for any of your projects. Um, so the really great thing about Fast API is it's simple to get started, but it's incredibly powerful and extensible. Um, the creator has done an amazing job of adding loads and loads of functionality. So you can sort of start small and then do incredibly powerful production grade API backends. It's got really powerful features. Um, the most important thing about it, and it's right there in the name, is that it's asynchronous. So it's really, really fast. It's more comparable to Node.js than to Flask even. So you can do really, really fast operations. Um, it does a, an incredible job auto-documenting your API. So right out of the box, once you um, use Fast API, you'll get Swagger documentation, which is interactive, and you can also take the open API specs and uh, export them to any platform of choice or into Postman, which is really, really helpful. It also has support for typing um, with Pydantic built in. So this is really, really helpful for managing responses and requests. Um, the creator has also built a typing package that he integrates with it. So it, it's a really great package. There's a growing community. I think the last time I looked, there was 20,000 stars on GitHub. So it's it's getting uh, really, really popular very, very quickly. It's used in lots of different industries and domains. And I sort of felt like it was just a matter of time before uh, the Neo4j community sort of found it and realized that it could do some really interesting things if you're building REST API backends. So what is FastGraph? Um, in a nutshell, it's Fast API plus Neo4j. So I've uh, built a few um, features and functions into it. Um, it's just a repository at the moment. Um, I'd love to sort of get ideas about where it could go and, and, and how others might be interested to use it or package it up. Um, I built in authorization. At the moment, it uses OAuth 2, but Fast API does have support for lots of different authorization flows, whether it be, you know, basic auth or password, or the case might be. FastGraph has user management. So it's really designed for applications where you would want to have users in your graph. So you can create, update, delete users um, just by using a basic endpoint call. Um, it's got support for password encryption. So you'll see that I've got an endpoint for when you create a user, it will automatically encrypt their password as well as resetting passwords, things like that. So you don't have to worry too much about some of those more basic things around user management. 
It's got basic CRUD functions as endpoints for both nodes and relationships. So you can do, um, you know, relatively simple things, but the beauty of Neo4j is that with simple functions, you can do an incredibly um, expansive list of, of things and incredibly powerful. So um, it just uses, uh, you know, a simple to understand parameterized cipher query for the most part. So if you do take a look at the repository, take a look through the code, you'll see that um, it should be really, uh, really straightforward for those of us who have become comfortable with the Cypher language and, and want to use it. Um, you can also do basic or simple things like placing restrictions on types of nodes. So if you're building a specific type of graph and you want to constrain users to certain nodes and relationships, it's really easy to customize that. Um, this is another feature that I'd love to get feedback on because I think it's a, it's a really neat opportunity to um, sort of get up and running on a structured graph uh, backend very, very quickly. I've also included an open Cypher endpoint. So um, you can mostly for playing around and sort of get, get used to using Cypher directly in your uh, endpoint calls. So yeah, with that, um, what I will do is give you a bit of a demo of how this works. So I'm just going to share my screen. that. So I hope everyone can see my screen. And I'm just going to go into, so it uses Ubicorn as a server. Oops, sorry. There's a neat little function, and that's how I'm giving the reload parameter, because what it will do actually is um, it'll actually automatically refresh when you save any changes to the code. It'll automatically refresh it um, in the application. So I'm just going to go to my local. So you see here, it's got an automatic endpoint for docs, which gives me the Swagger documentation. All of this is customizable. So it's really great in terms of you know versioning. You can update all the descriptions, things like that. Um, you'll notice that I have the um, I've built in authorization. So Anytime you want to make an endpoint call, you will have to be an authorized user. But in order to get around that, when you want to create your first user, um, like a super admin, you can actually just use this launch user endpoint. And as long as you have an application password in your environment variables, um, you can create that first user, which will allow you to do everything else. So I've gone ahead and created myself as a super admin. So I'm just going to authorize quickly. So you'll see you can do this directly in the Swagger documentation. But this is something that it's an OAuth queue flow, so you will have to make a call to the token endpoint. But uh, those who are familiar with um, this flow, it should be very, very straightforward. So now that I'm authorized, let's take a look just at, so you see me, I've just created myself um, in my database. I'll just go back to, so now let's create a node. Just try it out. Uh, let's create an event. And we'll call it nodes 2021. And we can put the, some additional parameters. So let's put, uh, oh, sorry. Okay. And then we'll execute that and hopefully that works. Great. You can see the node was created. Fantastic. And then what we want to do is let's just create a simple relationship. So um, this is the way that I've approached it. I, I am open to different ways that we could uh, customize this API, but let's do it this way. So we're looking for a user with a username, vendor 2242, my email. And then we're going to look for an event with the name property of notes. 2021, you can tell me I'm still going to use my new keyboard. And we're going to say attended. And then what we'll do is we will just say rating. Let's give it a 10 rating. Oh, we're having a bit of an issue there. Okay, that's fine. Um, not sure what exactly is going on, but let's. Still give me a bit of an error. But suffice to say, we can take a look and we can see. Let's run this again and we'll see that it will have created the node. And I think I might have entered that wrong, but that's fine. Um, so if we just go back, 
you'll see that um, out of the box, these are all the endpoints that I built, but obviously there's loads of expansive opportunities. So, um, you know, eager to get, uh, to get your feedback. Um, I'm just gonna go back to here and stop sharing my screen. And yeah, um, there will be questions, I suppose, in the Q&A, and I look forward to your comments and feedback.